Welcome, everybody, to the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Each week, Ray spotlights in-depth interviews with legendary and up-and-coming authors and music artists. Ray also features the movers and the shakers of the music and publishing industries and suggests important methods for getting the most out of your public relations and marketing needs. Please welcome music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Shasho, and welcome to the show where we spotlight legendary and coming music artists and authors. Brought to you, of course, by the Publicity Works Agency. Call us today at 941 877 552 or visit www.publicityworksagency.com. We shine only when we make you shine. Our very special guest today is Swiss native Patrick Moraz, the extraordinary artist and composer for no less than two legendary supergroups. Yes, from 1974 through 76, and the Moody Blues from 70 through 91. Patrick's first solo album, entitled The Story of I, was hailed by critics as a musical masterpiece. Most recently, Patrick Moraz and Greg Albin have released their first album together entitled MAP. The constant the meaning of MAP is, first and foremost, the Miraz Album Project. It's an excellent CD and features an array of pre- prodigious musicians. Uh, MAP is available to purchase at www.map.website, cdbaby.com, and, of course, amazon.com, to name just a few. It is my great pleasure today to welcome Patrick Moraz to the Ray Shasho Show. Hello, Patrick. Hello. Hello, Ray. How are you doing? And that's great to hear your voice because the last time uh, we did an, an interview, which was, uh, you know, about, I don't know, nine months or a year ago. And uh, I'm really, really happy to be invited on your show again and very honored about it because you did such a great uh, interview already. That's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. You know, when, when I started this program, I said the first, first one I, I'm, I was thinking about is Patrick Moraz, because you're definitely one of my favorite keyboardists of all time. And uh, I definitely had to have you on the show. So it's wonderful with you again. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Patrick, let's, let's first chat about your most recent release, which I love. Uh, it's an instrumental. Uh, you're with Greg Alban. Uh, it's entitled MAP or the Mraz Alban Project. And we talked about this project uh, coming along with our last interview. I, we knew, I knew it was coming, but we never knew when it was exactly released. And it's out there for everybody to buy. Uh, how's this project uh, all come together for you? Well, uh, um, you know, I've, I've been very, very good friends uh, with Greg Alban uh, for the last 30 years already, because in 1985, I discovered him and his band uh, with, along with John Avila, the bass player. And Greg Olson had a, a band called Ice, and he was doing the, the best clubs kind of around, in and around L.A., especially in Manhattan Beach and so on. And, and it was an impeccable rhythm section. I was so impressed with, with that rhythm section that um, I asked them, uh, asked Greg to play along on my Time Code solo album, um, for three, uh, three cuts, you know, the No Sleep Tonight and, uh, you know, You're the Vision of My Dream and so on. And he did such a great job. We, we always carried on, uh, you know, uh, maintaining our relationship and being friends and playing in and around uh, L.A., but, but at, at some jams or whatever, at his house or in my studio at the time and so on. And uh, a few, um, <clears throat> actually a few years ago, not, not that long ago, but a few years ago, he asked me, he said, Patrick, I have the means to do a production um, with you. I'd, lo- I'd love to do, uh, could, could you compose me uh, uh, some tunes, you know, for an album that I could play on with you and we could produce it together, but I have the means to do it. Of course, it's going to take some time and uh, I'd love to do it. So I, I put my compositional skills <laughs> to work, so to speak, and uh, I came up with 14 uh, pieces that uh, I prepared in my studio in Florida and uh, uh, prepared, you know, fully, fully uh, uh, composed, composed and arranged. But with, the, of course, the space, I composed really for uh, him in mind as a drummer because I knew his style. 
And um, also, I knew that he was going to uh, ask John Avila ba basically uh, on base. And eventually, you know, there, there's some other additional uh, players that we fantastic players that we're going to talk about it, it, uh, later. Yeah, you have some incredible uh, players on that album, including uh, the gentleman from Oingo Boingo, correct? Yeah, that's right. John Avila. John uh, Avila, is, right. He's the bass player who played um, that for over 10 years uh, with, John, uh, with uh, Oingo Boingo, with Danny right. Elfman, of course, uh, the famous and uh, one of my uh, 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 idol composers for films. You know, I mean, I love, I love that kind of music. I love his music. And, and, and John Avila is a fantastic bass player and singer, but also his, 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 his own um, Bonafide producer. He's, he's done a lot of production. And I understand even that his daughter is, is a fantastic jazz singer uh, oh. who has already appeared at the, the Jazz Festival of Montreux, you know, and it's that fantastic right. family. Yeah. I, you've also appeared there, right, at, at that jazz festival. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Several times. Several times. Yeah. And, and hopefully... Um, I'm going to be asked to uh, to appear on the, for the 50th anniversary next year mm -hmm. uh, at the Jazz Festival uh, with Map and maybe with some other guests as well. It's not it's, oh, really? it's, it's not a done deal yet, but I, I think uh, you know I've got all the trumps in my hand. <laughs> to, <laughs> to do that, you know. But you're you're certainly one of the great keyboardists in 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 the world, and you always have been, and I've always admired your work. Uh, this, this album, I, my comments on it is, it will cleanse the soul, it's upbeat, and thoroughly satisfying. I hope you like those words. <laughs> well, I, well, I, 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 absolutely, man. Yeah, man it's such a compliment, especially coming from you, because you're doing so many uh, interviews with so many uh, great, great uh, musicians and singers and people in the, in the art uh, uh, community of, of the United States and so on, and, and you know so much. Uh, that's coming from you, it's like, wow, man. It's the epitome, <laughs> the epitome I appreciate of that. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. I do have favorite tracks, and I always point out favorite tracks on the album. Uh, my favorite, I've got to say, um, I, I love every track, but uh, come on, Alien Species? <laughs> All right. Oh, my All right. God. That is such an awesome track, very spacey track, and you know, I, I you know, it's so different than the other track because a lot of the other tracks are upbeat. You know, you got a little bit of jazz influence and fusion. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of, you know, different genres I can, I can tell, but this one is, is specifically a spacey tune. And I'm into space. I'm into progressive rock. That's why I love you and Yes and the Moody Blues. And Alien Species is such a great track. I love that song. What 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 what, uh, what what got you to uh, you know go off you know the, the the path there a little bit and and and, and write alien species? Well, I uh, originally I recorded uh, fourteen tunes for the mm -hmm. album, right? Uh, for the map CD, and then eventually we chose, <clears throat> of course, uh, mutually um, speaking, uh, Greg and I we we chose nine tracks, and we thought uh, about that after the the the. The eight tracks of the map, which are pretty intense. I mean, apart from the the, the, the seventh one, which is a, a very kind of uh, laid back, but also has a great feel to it. It's a slower uh, track, but it's a, a kind of a very difficult track to to have played together because you know there's such a feeling and there's some spaces and and uh, you know it's slower. But all the other tracks are really fast and demanding. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, not only to the players, but for the players, but to the listeners. And so we thought that to um, to end up the the, the 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 album with something very spacey, and and also to um, do a little reprise of the word alien, you know, because alien comes also from the fact that personally speaking, I'm, I'm an alien, I'm a registered alien in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. You know, I'm, I'm always, I'm always, of course, we're always interested with the extraterrestrials. Uh, uh, potential encounters and uh, discoveries and so on. And um, alien has been part of my vocabulary as a word since uh, many, many, many decades, actually, you know. <laughs> that's, that's funny. I, I didn't think of it that way. I, I just thought you were very much into, uh, like you said, the extraterrestrial and, 
and space, and because that would make sense. <laughs> right, right. So you know, my my, my first uh, my, uh, my my cousin from Switzerland, uh, Michel Mayer, uh, right. was the very very first uh, astrophysicist in 1995 to discover to discover the very first extra solar planet, Pegasi B51. And, uh, you know, of course, after that, uh, a lot of scientists and astrophysicists around the world have discovered more extrasolar planets, but, but he was right. the very, very first one to discover that. And uh, I remember that when we, uh, we, we were kids, we used to go around uh, where, uh, you know, where we used to live in Switzerland, around the lake of Geneva, and uh, the mountains called the Plains, you know, above Montreux and Vevey. And uh, we used to, um, to go with his dad. I mean, we were, we were even before our, our 10 years old, you know, we were like seven and eight and, and you know, six and, and nine. And uh, we, we used to um, uh, borrow um, the, 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 the Geiger counter from, from, from his dad, who was an astrophysicist and a, a very pointed scientist also at the time. And we, we used to go and look in, in, the, 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 in the rocks, of, of these areas for some ur- uranium, you know. So we had <laughs> Geiger counters, and they were going, <laughs> you know, when, whenever there, there was a little bit of uh, activity, and uh, that, that right. was a very interesting thing. So I remember uh, the, this relation with my cousin so well, you know, and I'm so very proud of him, of course, that uh, he has discovered that extra planet the first. It must must be a very intelligent man, I tell you that, because that's that's hard to do. <laughs> a oh, lot of mathematics I mean, involved. <laughs> absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. I've, got, I've got other other um, stories and encounters I, I, I can t- t- tell you about a bit later. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I love your I love your <laughs> questions about the music. You know, of course. You know, it's fantastic. You know. Well, I'm going to read a couple. I'm going to go down the track so everybody knows what the tracks are. The uh, track one is Jungle Alien. It's a very cool track. Uh, to me, it, it's like a funky space sound with, uh, you know, a little Jeff Beckish overtones, I thought, you know, because Jeff Beck used to do a little bit of this, too. Uh, right. it, it, it's a great jam, great jam on that track. Um, strictly organic, be- you know, beautiful key- keyboards on that, by the way. Uh, Canyon Afternoon, it's the third track. Uh, now, now, on this one, is that an actually sax, or is that a phone sound coming from a keyboard? Because today, you, you never know. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but, but, you know, on, on that third track, it's actually a real tenor saxophonist from, uh, actually a very, very good friend from Greg Olden from Vegas, hey. and uh, who is also what we call, what we could call a heavyweight instrumentalist, because he plays violin, as well as he plays sax and he plays all kinds of other instruments. He's got his own uh, band and he plays, uh, you know, professionally in Las Vegas in, two, in, in all kinds of uh, places, events and clubs and so on. And Dave Van Such did such a great job because, you know, I composed, of course, the music and I, um, I wrote, I wrote the, 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 the main theme, you know, but then he took it uh, upon himself to uh, record at the invitation of Greg. He went to L.A., and uh, to a very, very good studio that we, we had uh, hard for the, 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 the remaining of the production of um, the map. And uh, the, right. the studio name is a studio, uh, it's a Total Access Studios in, in Torrance. And, and the, 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 the engineer, Win Davis, is a very good um, friend of mine and of us, but he's also a veteran engineer who has made uh, hundreds and hundreds of recordings, not only even in the States and in his studio, but but also in Europe and in China and in Japan and so on. And, and he's a fantastic engineer, and he really uh, took upon him to, to have uh, 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 the, the creativity of this album uh, to, to its peak, you know, and, and uh, I've got to really uh, honor that, you know. Well, if, if you love sax like I do, you'll, you'll, you'll love the track Canyon Afternoon. It, it's an incredible, lots of sax on that, on that track, and it's a, it's a song. Uh, Jazz in the Night is the fourth track, which is another awesome uh, track. Um, number five is Drums Also, the Drums Also Solo, which is also a favorite of mine. Um, the Real Feel, which is a slower, a slower uh, song. Uh, that's track six. And again, number seven is Alien Intelligence. We got that alien word again. Very upbeat tune. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and Very upbeat. 
and and for that for, for that tune, I'd like to to um, to point out that when I was uh, composing it and uh, when I was doing, uh, of course, all the instrumentation basically uh, to uh, to have the arrangement for the other players and so on. Uh, of course, John Avila is playing the bass on that track, but in the middle, I think it's at uh, 2 minutes 18, until 3 minutes 18, there is uh, some aspect of the bass solo in the middle part of the of the song. And right. I actually, uh, you know, once again, to answer your question about uh, instruments nowadays, we, we don't know if they are real, the yeah. real instruments or keyboards, but that, that one is actually played by myself on a keyboard, and uh, with a very uh, extra sample, I I, uh, I organized and uh, get the, the the sound of, and I, I played it myself uh, the, the, that uh, bass solo. And at the time, I was uh, not even aware that Chris Choir was so ill, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's only yeah. later, but but um, I, I, what what I I was thinking about Chris Choir when I did that, and and about the influences it had on me. As a musician and as a member, of course, of, of the, the, the group, yes, when I was there, and uh, remaining always uh, as a friend and so on, but also as an influence to uh, probably millions of bass players in the world, you know, during right. his career. And I would like to offer uh, this uh, little uh, one minute, uh, you know, solo to a tribute to his uh, musical legacy and, and, and memory because, uh, you know, he really, really was a force in, in, in the music. Yes, he was. Well, we're all going to miss Chris. I, I've interviewed Chris before. Nice guy. Uh, you know, and, and, I, and I love his solo works, especially Fish Out of Water, which you were on. I believe you were yeah. on that as well. Yeah. That's, that's what, that's, right. To me, that's a masterpiece. I love that. I love that album. That's a great album. Oh, by yeah. Chris yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and that, then the, uh, the, <laughs> the eighth uh, track on that is Mumbai, um, Mumbai Mantra, which is an awesome uh, kind of jazz fusion, right, on that track. That's, that's which I, just, with an with an Indian Indian kind of flavor, right? Which I love. And, yeah, and and uh, on this one I've got a different bass player. Okay. And uh, his name is Patrick Perrier. Uh, of course, he's got no relation to the Perrier uh, Water family in France. But <laughs> but uh, but uh, to to uh, to tell you that uh, Patrick Perrier is probably one of the most uh, sought after bass players in the. In the that part of Switzerland, he, he lives uh, not far from Montreux. But he, I, I can tell you, that guy does at least two or three sessions with different bands and people and recordings every day. And he has at least three or four different shows uh, a week, you know. And he's so in demand because he is the, actually is the nearest, if I may even mention the name of, of one of the greatest, greatest bass players in the world as well. Along Chris Quan as well, but you know, we're talking about Jaco Pastorius and oh, yeah. uh, the, the Patrick Perrier um, is is probably one of the very nearest uh, sounding and playing bass players that I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, who can play like who is ne near Jaco Pastorius' style, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah, it was probably the, the the epitome of a bass player at the time. You know, I, I've been. I've been very fortunate to play with some of the very best bass players in the world, including uh, Jeff Berlin and a very good friend of mine who plays on I and uh, my first solo album, uh, you know, I, 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 a.k.a., of course, uh, uh, also known as um, uh, the story of I, but it was called I originally, and also a very, very, very good friend of mine called Bunny Brunel, who mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've, I've appeared on, and also... A uh, bass player who is now playing with yes, but he plays also guitar and he plays all kinds of instruments. He plays even the drums and he sings and he does his own productions. He's, I'm talking about Billy Sherwood. Very, yeah, very good. That's right. yep. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've interviewed Billy and I've interviewed Jeff, and uh, Jeff, they're both both nice guys. Both nice guys. Yeah, and, and, and very, very bass. talented musician. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. I, th yeah. I think at one time they, they, they said that Jeff was might be one of the greatest bass players in the world at one time, is, is what they were all saying about Jeff Berlin. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He probably yeah. was in his own style. He's in style. You know, he has a style. I mean, I, I think he dedicated a lot of his uh, bass playing to... I mean, he can play anything, really. He can play. And he can read anything, and he can write anything, and he, he can compose. He's a great composer as well. But he has a very um, preferred liking, I think, for 
for jazz, for some aspect of jazz, um, tunes and, and even standard and rendition that he has done on his own albums. And uh, but but you can play absolutely everything. Actually, we played Chris Choir as uh, as the bass player um, uh, during a yes um, uh, a year, I think, uh, or two or, or whatever, you know. And uh, you know. Well, Map or the Mraz Album Project is an incredible album. Uh, like I said, the album will cleanse the soul. It's an upbeat and thoroughly satisfying, uh, beautiful piece of work. Uh, I, everyone should go out and buy that, and uh, you will thoroughly enjoy the album. And, uh, you know, I give it five stars. If, if I have to, I'll give, give it five stars. Hope, hope that's okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You know what, what if, I'm if <laughs> if you just joined us, we're, we're talking to the legendary Patrick Miraz, uh, the keyboardist extraordinaire, uh, played with two legendary um, uh, rock bands, or is what they say today, classic rock, which is Yes and the Moody Blues. How many people can say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's pretty I, incredible. I, I'm, I'm probably the, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly the, the, the only musicians. Uh, who has uh, fulfilled uh, this kind of uh, tenures. But also, uh, I've got to say that before, yes, I was with a great, great trio uh, that I, I had formed with um, uh, Brian Davison and Lee Jack, the late Brian Davison and Lee Jackson, who used to play with Keith Emerson in the night. And actually, the, 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 the name of the band is, is uh, now once again uh, very topical, uh, uh, you know, in, in a way, unfortunately, because we're talking about refugees in the world and so on. But the, the name of the band uh, that we formed in 1973, and uh, uh, we did the first album in 74, was called Refugee. And uh, I composed all the music for that band. And the, the, these guys were absolutely unbelievable and, and greatly. And we, we had a fantastic uh, empathy together as well with Lee, Lee Jackson and Brian Davison. And, uh, you know, the, that, that was a fantastic band, which could have been actually uh, on the map of the world at the time, you know, if I hadn't that been was a great, Yeah, Refugee, Refugee was a great band. Great, great yeah. band. You're right. Yeah. By the way, uh, also, what I'd like to quickly mention is that I have all my, I've been able to recover all my CDs on the one roof and all my licenses all my licenses and so on, and I'm now uh, distributing uh, kind of myself. I've got 18 solo CDs. I've got two other CDs with Refugee, um, the live one and the studio one, and I've got another uh, uh, album and two other albums with Bill Bruford under the name of Murras Bruford. But right. the, 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 the package of my own solo CDs, including Main Horse, uh, includes actually has a... a you know, uh, an array of 18 CDs, which I'm, of course, I would like to uh, to offer to the to, to the audience, to my fans, and to the public, uh, whether as a package or uh, one by one, or even two or three of, of one kind or whatever, or you know, right. or other kind. Even so, a box you know, set. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. 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 I mean, when you see the package, it's very Im impressive, you know. And I've got That'd all that in my in my studio in Florida, all ready to go. And uh, <laughs> it'd be nice to, to have some uh, some uh, requests for that, you know. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, I'll be the first in line to, to purchase it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick, I want to. I, I, we need to talk, of course, about yes and the Moody Blues as yes, well. Um, I was naturally disappointed when you departed yes. I've always believed that yes, the the yes lineup during Relayer magical. And it was instrumentally and lyrically at their very best. And not only that, you guys were selling out big time. You know, the, you, I remember seeing you at RK Stadium in D.C. with 45,000 people. I believe you played Philadelphia as well to over, to definitely over 50,000 people. To me, that was the strongest lineup of yes. Absolutely, and, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> to, to come back quickly to the, those tours in 1976, I mean, I, I've been with them. Uh, since August 74 to the end of 76, really. And okay. uh, like in 76, we had the Bicentennial Tour where we played right. at least at least 55 concerts, each one of them being over 25,000. When we played JFK Stadium at uh, Philadelphia on the 12th of June 1976, we had uh, a, a staggering amount of, of people uh, of, of 135,000. 
in, in the stadium. You know, that was absolutely uh, mind-boggling. And I remember the Washington, D.C. Uh, stadium. I remember the Chicago one as well. We had 83,000 people. I remember the one in L.A. as well, in uh, Anaheim, uh, the, the, the big, big, big stadium there. The, even the, the, the president's uh, family, that was President Ford at the time, his family right. was there with the Secret Service and helicopters flying around the stadium all the time, whether we were playing or before uh, and after, of course, to protect, uh, you know, the, 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 the presidential family and so on. And uh, we had also a very strange but very, very good and interesting uh, show at uh, um, uh, Roosevelt Stadium in mm-hmm. um, uh, around New York. I don't know if it's New York State or New Jersey, but, but the Roosevelt Stadium, we had about... Uh, uh, 63 or 65,000 people there. And, uh, you know, I mean, as you say, all, all, the, all the shows were sold out. Now, uh, for the last, uh, for the two years before that, of course, like you mentioned, I participated in, uh, upon their request, uh, like a Chris Choir, I, I played on um, Fish Out of Water, which was a very, very special and demanding kind of uh, bunch of parts uh, to play right. for the sessions. And I, that's the first time I, I really played and, and re-met, uh, but played professionally with Bill Bruford, wh- wh- with whom I, I, I created the, the Maras Bruford duo um, mm-hmm. in, uh, from 1983 to 1985. And I also played in 1975 when we decided to do the, the, the solo albums. I played of course, and, and arranged the, the orchestra for beginnings for Steve Howe, uh, who came to me and, and presented me a, a sentence, a musical sentence on his guitar and said, please, can you do something a la Vivaldi? So we, and of course, I, I came up three weeks later with a six minutes, 40 um, seconds piece uh, for a whole uh, half of a symphony orchestra, and, and I conducted it and played the half chord for him. And I think he was kind of uh, mind boggled when he when he heard it, and uh, you know it turned out to be very 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 well uh, received and, and and very good, very well uh, recorded and so on. And I also the, did the cameo, of course, on Ram Shackle with Alan. You know, all these guys I'm still very good friends with, and I went to see them uh, a few weeks ago on the 23rd of November, uh, August, uh, 23rd of August, in uh, at the Ruth Eckert Hall in in uh, Clearwater near Tampa, and uh, we, we all embraced each other and so on. And, and I was, of course, also uh, uh, invited to play uh, two concerts on, of my own on the Cruise to the Edge last year on the Divina Ship and I, I, with an extra uh, piano solo concert, um, which I, I gracefully accepted to, you know, to do because it was such a fantastic experience. I had never been on a cruise like that or any cruise, and it was fantastic, you know. So, That's got to uh, be a lot of fun. <laughs> now to, to 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 talk about the, your your comment and and kind of question uh, about my departure from yes to tell you the truth I, I for the last the, the the two years prior to my departure from yes I had also been preparing with them all the material for going for the one and I was um, I mean I was a co-composer of all the, especially of Awaken and so on. And um, uh, other pieces, of course, all all the going for the one pieces, and and the, the famous riff from Awaken, which goes like bum bum ta dum 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 bum ta dum bum 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 ta dum. That was my uh, my comp- my idea, my composition, and, and uh, you know, and the riff was being followed, and, and the idea for the organ, and also the the technology to use the, the church organ from the Vevey uh, mm-hmm. uh, Church San Martin. To have the, the the telegraph and telephone company from Switzerland, which is a, a federal um, a federal uh, institution, to have them uh, uh, um, wire the cables to go directly to the studio in Montreux where we were recording. And uh, I've got to tell you the, the only thing I, I would like to to say here, and I'm not going to go any further on that, but I I, I was um, it was a shock for me when I was told to. Uh, to leave yes at the time because it was not my li- my, my decision, and uh, you know I understand that Rick came was already actually in Montreux at the time I was um, asked to leave uh, the band after this uh, huge uh, and successful tours that we had done, especially the 1976 one. I mean all the tours. I mean we were number one also on on all the polls. Um, as as uh, the, the rock and roll band of the of the year each year, you know, seventy four, seventy five, seventy six, 
And uh, for me, it was a real shock and a surprise to have, been, uh, to have been asked to leave the band at that time, you know. Yeah, it was a shock to me and, and all the Yes fanatics, which I was one for years and years and years. And to me, you know, I, I still say to this day, Relayer was the masterpiece for Yes. And it was such an what? intricate piece. You know, and to and to play that live is almost impossible. <laughs> in, in, well, in front of fifty thousand <laughs> people, that's got to be impossible. <laughs> yeah, that was. I don't know very, how you guys did it. That was a very big challenge uh, to do. Uh, <laughs> to do the, not only to also to, to contribute, of course, to the, the recording of Relayer, and also to play and to learn all uh, the, the seven um, symphonies that they had created prior to Relayer for me to play. Uh, within the next uh, six to eight weeks before we went on tour, or actually in November of 1974, and right. having uh, spent about seven weeks recording, uh, six to seven weeks recording Relayer, uh, which was a very complex, as you said, a very complex album. How, when, when, um, when I was asked to, to, to leave the band uh, at, the, uh, at the end of uh, 1976, in Montreal, Switzerland, which is my 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 country, I'm an originary originary from uh, from Switzerland. I immediately uh, went um, to um, ask to to fulfill my my engagement to do my next solo album, which was called uh, Out in the Sun. Right. And uh, actually, there's a piece called the Time for a Change in Out in the Sun, which the introduction of is very reminiscent of what I would have done as uh, the, 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 the first um, several bars for, uh, for the song Awaken, uh, with a, a beautiful instrument which I had uh, designed and asked Tom Oberheim to, to build for me with a double uh, keyboard. And, uh, you know, it was the first of its kind like that, with 16 oscillators and eight voices, but with a double keyboard. And that's the one I, I have played and composed and... and uh, help, uh, you know, of course, co-compose this uh, Awaken with, with John and Steve and so on, when I was still with Yes, but, but since uh, they, 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 they didn't um, keep that uh, in the recording, in the first recordings, and, and put, they put uh, the Rick's uh, um, introduction to, to, uh, to that uh, tune, of course, I, I, I uh, took upon me to, to reproduce that, uh, almost uh, exactly as, as it could have been, you know, at least the first few bars. I mean, I'm not talking right. about the rest. Just the first yep. bar. And then uh, I, I did, I, I called the whole piece, which is pretty long in the Sunday. It's the last piece, I called it Time for a Change, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> which, uh, you know, uh, came upon the sense, you know. But, uh, but I was, uh, I really, really, really enjoyed my stay with, with Yes and uh, yeah. all the shows we did and all the recordings and all the guys and that was absolutely fantastic. We're still very, very, very good friends. I think the last time we chatted, you also said that uh, the track, you know, the Gates of Delirium from Relayer was influenced but possibly by a book you were reading. Is that true? Uh, well, yeah, but uh, the, 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 the title of it. The title, the title of it, right. Yeah. The title of it was, I'm sure, uh, um, yeah, I'm absolutely certain of that, uh, by the title of a book, and it was a, a comic. Uh, what right. do you call a comic? Uh, but it's not comic. It was a very, uh, very intense kind of a, uh, a book uh, from a French um, a writer called Philippe Druyer, and and mm -hmm. the book was called Delirious. Yeah. You know, and but it had also this kind of uh, 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 extraterrestrial connotation that you could have found also if you were. Uh, if you had, of course, and, and of course, uh, John Anderson had this kind of imagination when he said he was influenced by Tolstoy, War and Peace, when he, when he, uh, when he was uh, uh, inspired to, to, uh, to create some of the, the words and, and uh, you know, some of the, 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 the pieces for uh, Gates of Delirium. But the title hadn't come together before he saw that book that I showed, it, that I showed to him. And I'm sure he would confirm that uh, instantly if uh, if he were asked. You know, I'm sure he would remember that. You know? Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, and which funny. was great. You know, which was great. But I've got to watch the that. Hey, whatever you know, inspires the title, you know. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. What, what I wanted to also uh, uh, mention here, since we, although you haven't asked me, you know, we were talking about solo albums and so on, and you were talking about the story of I. I told you that yep. I called this I in the first place. But the yeah. idea, the idea came 
to me, when we, I was with Yes actually in 75, uh, we had a day off in Nashville and we were staying at the Hyatt Hotel. And in the elevator, I just had a, a flash of an idea. But that was my idea and the whole concept of the story of I or I uh, was my idea. I, it's not because I, I said it to John Anderson at the time that he, he, he didn't, he, he liked the idea, but he didn't give me any uh, input uh, to that idea. And uh, I'm sure he respected the fact that I was the instigator of that idea. And I, I can say that it, it was 100% my own idea and inspiration. Well, you know, I, I think the, with the untimely death of Chris Squire, uh, you know, I am, I'm not happy with Yes touring with, with who they are. It's just not the same. And I think the only way they can continue with dignity would be to bring back somebody like you at, on keyboards and, uh, you know, Billy Sherwood does a heck of a job on bass, and he, he has played in Yes, so he's he nicely there. Um, I, I love Jeff Downs. I've interviewed Jeff. He does a marvelous job, but he was, wasn't with, you know, one of the, the you know, part of the, uh, the, the big Yes picture. Um, so I, I'd love to see you come back and John Anderson, and then we've got, we, now I can respect Yes again. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the only way I can respect Yes again. You and John okay, Anderson well, coming back, or, you know, of course, Rick. But uh, I'd rather uh, Patrick Mraz in there because you were there during the heyday and uh, uh, you're, you're, you're a great keyboardist. And I miss John when I, a lot. I, I, when, I, when I was talking with them backstage, and, and I even I was kind of joking about it, but I said, if ever, you, you, you know, because these days, uh, yes, they do, they do uh, one or two albums per tour. Completely, or even three. I mean, I mean, three years ago, I saw them do three albums. Now they're doing two. I think they're doing now. They're doing Fragile and uh, the Yes album, or going for the one and the Yes album, or Fragile, or you know, and they or close to the edge or something. But but I told them if they do, uh, if they wanted ever to do uh, rel- the, the the whole of Relayer and even the whole of Topographic Oceans, I, I'd love to be. Uh, coming back and, uh, to, to play that with them, even if we if we had to share the stage, if I had to share the stage, of course, if if, if, if Jeff Jeff Downs was okay to share the stage with me, and and, and we could, I mean, that yeah. would be unbelievable. And then I tell you what, those guys, I mean, Billy Sherwood is a fantastic uh, musician. He knows uh, he the, 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 the the inside of yes, like Chris Coir did. Of course, it's not exactly the same kind of player because he plays also. Don't forget. Uh, Bill Sherwood has, he plays drums, he plays, uh, he sings, he plays guitar, and, uh, and he, has, he has his own style. But I think he did a fantastic job when I saw them on the 23rd of August. And John Davison, the, their new singer, has the pitch, has the voice to deliver all the, 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 the songs that uh, John uh, Anderson so geniusly uh, created all over the, these years, these past few years. Of course, John Anderson. I was always saying that, you know, Jen Anderson uh, is the spirit, is the, the, the true, uh, you know, inspired um, also um, spirit of yes, but also uh, the spiritual kind of leader of, of, of the band, the way it was yeah. and so on. And, um, you know, I'm sure he, he, he wouldn't mind. And I, I mean, they, they, they've done a reunion a tour in 1992 or 1991. Which I was very, very sorry not to have been able to join because I was potentially still with the Moody's, but I had been just told I was no longer with the Moody's just as they were starting the, the tour. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to be part of that tour as well, especially with Bill Bruford and, and Alan. They had the two drummers, they had the, uh, the yeah. two keyboard players. They, they, they had, you know, I mean, I mean, yes, it's such an institution that after all these years, I think all the trumps in, in, the, in the hands of the, the makers of Yes and the, the producers and so on should be actually at their disposal and the management as well. And they should realize exactly what you said, that maybe they, 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 they need a little bit of a, of a, of a uh, shot in the arm, you know, to, to, uh, to carry on uh, grander than ever, you know. And I, I'm ready, man. I, I know the music by heart. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and my motto is always, 
still have keyboards will travel. <laughs> yeah, you have keyboards will travel. And you have a lot of keyboards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still, still, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Still, yeah, I know. I, you know, they, a, a reunion tour would be fantastic. You know, bring, bring you in, you know, you, like you say, you can share the stage with, stage with either Jeff or Rick. Uh, yeah, because, or, or, I mean, Jeff, or, Jeff, yeah, or, you know, they all, yeah. they all know that I have the greatest respect for their playing and what they sure. do. And, and Jeff, Jeff Downs are very good friends with. And he, I think I understand he even put a picture of, of him and me um, uh, that we took backstage the other day on his, on his right. Facebook. No, it's great, you know, and I, I love those guys. And and, yeah, and Billy bring, Sherwood bring, bring and Bill, Alan. bring yeah, in Bill, bring in Bill Rupert with Alan. Alan. <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. It, it makes it makes sense. And you know, you guys tour with all the, uh, the some of the original guys, and you guys are going to sell out everywhere. I'm telling you, you know, so <laughs> yeah, a promoter I mean, yeah, just needs to put it together. Be, that you would know? be fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot and of I've people, the, do, you know, I've got the, I certainly have the energy and. Actually, yeah, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing some, some concerts um, very soon. Uh, a, a couple of uh, uh, guest appearances on the Renaissance tour with, with Annie Haslam. And yeah, I love Annie. At, love Annie. At the, Annie's at the awesome. New Jersey, yeah, the New Jersey uh, Performing Arts Center on the yep. 9th and 10th of October. I'm, I'm invited to do a guest appearance on each concert. At the end with them, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward uh, to that. There's going to be a surprise, or a couple of surprises, of course, you know. And uh, you know, they, they, I'm very honored to have been invited to do that with, uh, you know, and with them. Yeah, you mess very well with uh, the Renaissance guys. You very, you know, because oh. that's that's definitely your, your kind of style as well. Uh, a lot of people don't know that um, a couple of things about you. One, you had a, a, a kind of a relationship with Salvador Dali when you were younger. And the other thing is, you were on the uh, set for Predator because I think you were asked to do some of the music for that, right? So you hung out with Schwarzenegger and everybody on on the, the original Predator movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I was well. The, the first one uh, you were talking about Salvador Dali. You know, in, when I was in my very early, uh, I, actually, I was twenty. You know, um, uh, I was uh, I had uh, undertaken the the I was a scuba diving instructor, and I had my my uh, certificate. From the, the Jacques Cousteau uh, School mm. of Spirotechnic and uh, Spirotechnic, not Pyrotechnic, Spirotechnic, which is right. the underwater, uh, you know, uh, course to, to uh, you know, to, to the, the whole thing, which is a very, very difficult thing. It, but I, I was a very, very good swimmer, and uh, so I was very interested, of course, with everything under the water and so on. <clears throat> so I went to, uh, with that, I went to the north of Spain. I was invited to go to the north of Spain, also to play some music and uh, to um, spend some time. I spent four months there, and uh, uh, a lot of the times I was invited at Salvador Dali's house to uh, organize some of his uh, uh, parties and to play at his house, and I was probably one of the very rare persons to be allowed in his own painting studio with Gala, and I mm. could speak with him. See, the, the, the beauty of that is that I could speak. He loved this, uh, speaking in French. And uh, he used to tell me, for example, uh, for, for example, Oh, la terre de chance s'intensifie de ce directeur, mon cher Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I could speak. I could speak with his, uh, his wife, Gala, who was French or, uh, originally. Right. For, for French. So I could speak perfect French with her and so on. And, and she loved that. And uh, you know, we, we had a very, very good, very, very tight understanding relationship. Of course, uh, I, I never really disclosed that that much because, you know, Salvador Dali is Salvador Dali, and he's, he's such a, uh, uh, the, the, the artist that, that uh, has been always uh, remaining and, and put in, in, uh, in, in, in that elevation all these years. You know, I didn't want to, to, to make it, but I, I did spend, and the, 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 the name of the place, of course, of the village, which was near his Paul, Lig Paul Ligat pro property, you know, Paul Ligat is L L I G A T. That that's where he was. Yep. He had a huge property by the sea, and yep. uh, that's exactly on the north of Spain. It's, it's about 40 kilometers uh, from Porbu, which is the French um, um, the French uh, uh, um, border, you know, between mm -hmm. Spain and France. But but the, the village where Paul Ligat is. Uh, maybe uh, uh, three kilometers down, uh, uh, the uh, very, very, um, uh, very um, difficult road full of, of, at the time, at least, 
full of, of stones and so on, and, and not, uh, uh, not at all cemented or anything like that. Uh, the, the, the name of that, that village, beautiful little village called Cadaquel in the north of Spain with a beautiful little port and, uh, of course, uh, some of the best um, Spanish uh, food and uh, entertainment you could ever find there. You know, it the, the, was a kind of a, of a holiday kind of uh, uh, stop for, for all kinds of um, uh, tourists, you know, not only from, from, uh, from France, but from, from, from everywhere in Europe. And, uh, you know, I, I spent four months there. And, uh, you know, after that, of course, I came back to my, my own town in Geneva, Switzerland. And then that's when, I mean, I, since I didn't speak a, a word of English still, you know, uh, my dad told me, well, why don't you get an au pair uh, uh, job as a cook, you know, in England? <laughs> <laughs> that was really hard, man. You know, at least I, I, I learned English that way, you know. And, and then I, I, got, I, I, I was able to get to get my Cambridge uh, University, um, you know, uh, uh, masters, you know, for English, you know. So I'm, I'm very happy about that, you know, uh, being able, being, having been able to do that. But now you were talking to me also about uh, another aspect of uh, of my life, and uh, that was when. Um, you you were talking exactly about which which period uh, you know oh, Pre- the, uh, when you were on the set oh, with Predator with Schwarzenegger and uh, I, oh, I, I believe yeah. you did some music for that movie or was asked yes, to do I, some music. I, I did the, I, at, the, at the request of uh, that was at the end of '96, right? But I I was already working on another movie called The Stepfather from Joe mm-hmm. Rubin, which was a very intense kind of thriller and so on. But they were still shooting and so on. But then I had been asked by Joel Silver the very famous uh, uh, producer of not only uh, the, the Predator movie, but also of the, um, you know, all these uh, the, the, the Die Hard movies. And uh, after that, the, the famous uh, the three uh, trilogy with Keanu Reeves. Right, you know, right. About these computers and, and stuff. And, and uh, anyway, uh, at the end of um, the middle of 86, uh, Joel Silver asked me to do a temp score for that, and uh, I did for Predator. They told me I, I read the thing, and I, he was very impressed. I think he discovered me through having heard me in the speakers of a, of a, of a store in New York, and he heard. Uh, he told me that he had heard Future Memories, which is an album I had done in 1979 and 1982, but the Future Memories one was 1979, where I was. It was totally instantly composed. And he said he liked the electronic aspect of the music and the intensity and so on. So I had a very, very good uh, rapport with him and his team, and also with John McTiernan, who was uh, the director of the movie of Predator. And he invited me at some point with my own engineer, Barry Radman. He invited me to Mexico, to Puerto Vallarta, in the jungle, where they had actually the, 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 the Fox production um, film company had actually bought a whole mountain to be able, they had bought the mountain with the restaurant that is appearing to be, to be uh, completely um, put to shred uh, through a bomb or whatever in the right. movie. And, yeah. uh, you know, and I, he invited me there. I know I, I, got, uh, I got flown uh, by a private jet down there to Puerto Vallarta and uh, then whisked away by helicopter to the jungle. Uh, I was, you know, I was going to stay. We, we stayed about uh, almost a week there. And uh, I was uh, asked to do some pictures, to take some pictures with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in, uh, in uh, uh, army fatigues. <laughs> and for me... For me, who is an absolute anti-militarist, especially as I'm a Swiss a citizen originally from Switzerland, yeah. and, and Switzerland is a neutral country, I could never understand why the neutral, a neutral country like Switzerland had the, the third best uh, um, uh, equipped army in the world at the time. You know, I'm talking about in the 60s when I, was, I had to, uh, been obliged to actually go and do the, the, the compulsory and necessary uh, 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 tests and exams to be um, to be chosen to be in the, in the army of Switzerland. But eventually, I, I got reformed. I, I found a way to 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 get reformed. Uh, and uh, and uh, you know, it's funny that I had never 
I've never ever worn uh, an army fatigue, and I've never even uh, <laughs> held a gun in my in my life in my hand. You know. <laughs> well, if you're around Arnold Schwarzenegger, you have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was he was such a great guy, man. I was, I mean, yeah. it, we you know it's great because I mean, with him, he's from Austria, so I could speak with him in German. Yep. And uh, we could joke in German and in English. Of, of course, he knew some French, of course, because it's very. And then there was also, you know, I mean, I was with all that crew of actors who were fantastic, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, the, 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 of course, the guy who plays uh, opposite uh, Sylvester Stallone in all the... Yeah, the Carl the, Weather. Carl Weather. Yeah, yeah Carl yep. Weather. Yep. Yep. Very good friends. And yep. Jesse Ventura, who became yeah. also the governor of Minnesota at the yep. same time almost as uh, Schwarzenegger became the governor of California, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I was with, with two with two future governors, man, and and these guys were so fantastic with me. They really treated me so well, and Joel Silver yeah. especially, very very good. And uh, you know, I mean, I think there's a picture uh, who was which was taken of me with with the uh, with, uh, Arnold on uh, on headphones listening to my music in the jungle between two scenes <laughs> being filmed, you know. That was great. I mean, that was like fantastic. You know, that was really. Yeah, everybody amazing. needs to go to your website because you do have a picture there with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it's it's, it's yeah, really cool. yeah. And I, I've yeah. got some even some other ones where, where he's uh, completely uh, in uh, not in in fatigue. He actually has taken his, his top off. You know, so, so yep. you can see you can see his muscles and so on. <laughs> it's really funny. But you know, <laughs> what happened is that. Although I did the ten score and I really was I was ready to do the 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 full score, um, I had to make a very important decision because on the beginning of '87 with the Moody Blues, of which I was a member of um, at the time, you know, since 19, uh, 1980, uh, 1980, yeah, they made me a member of the Moody Blues in 1980. Um, I. I had to choose be between going with them, of course, and, and fulfill my obligation with them as a member right. to go to Australia to do the, uh, start the world tour in Australia uh, mm -hmm. for several weeks, which was coinciding exactly at the same time as I would have had to record with a full symphony orchestra the music for right. uh, Predator. And, uh, of course, uh, since I had to decide to, to become... Uh, to, to, to stay with the Moody's for that, uh, they, they, they couldn't wait. And so, of course, they, they asked the, uh, the fantastic uh, and inspired and, and uh, another idol of mine for film music is Alan Silvestri, man. I mean, he did a fantastic job. That was just like, oh, man, I would have even loved to be just his assistant for that, <laughs> you know. I mean, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying. That guy is so... Uh, is a genius. I mean, you know, it's yeah, like fantastic yeah. job. And so everything turned out very well. Um, I think even the Stepfather movie, which were, were, they were still shooting at the time, uh, mm -hmm. I had been able to finish it and go to Mexico and then come back and finish the Stepfather because they were still uh, running right. those, those, those scenes. Uh, turned out very well. Of course, not the same kind of box office success as Predator, but it was a very, very good movie, very scary. Yeah. I think the score I did for it was, was very well received. And mm -hmm. uh, I understand that, well, you know, when I came to, uh, to the last editing session, when the film was just about finished, I had ne never been in that studio, uh, the editing, the final editing studio in, in, uh, in the Valley, you know, in, in, uh, in Los Angeles, in Hollywood. Uh, everybody uh, uh, stood up and, and, and uh, gave me an applause for the score, you know. So that was really uh, something else, you know. <laughs> Patrick, we're running out of time here. Uh, I yeah. just want to say, I, I think the last time we talked, uh, just real quickly, A Way to Freedom, is that still in the works? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. The only thing I can tell you is that A Way to Freedom, I don't know if I've announced that or, or not, but people are under the impression that it's just one CD. It's not one CD. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a whole... Um, uh, package of seven new, completely new CDs, which are okay. encompassing not only my keyboards and a band and several bands and, and string quartets and so on, but also a symphony orchestra and, and a whole 150 piece choir. And that uh, and has when been it, when it, Is that out yet or not yet? No, 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 no. I'm still in production for that. 
hopefully I'll, production. I'll, be able, okay. I'll, I'll be able to release it uh, next year. But, but I've been working on it uh, since 1996, very solidly. Right. And even some pieces I, I started in 1990, would you believe? You know, so it's a complex, very complex, but it's, it's going to happen. It's happening, you know. Excellent. Patrick, thank you so much for being on the call today. I could talk to you for hours. You know that, man. Yeah, man. That was great, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Very and, honored and more, to do this for you. Importantly, for all the incredible music with Yes, the Moody Blues, and your brilliant solo projects, and the sensational music you continue to bring us. I thank you so much. It, it, you're always a great guest, and I and, and love talking to you. Thank bye you so much. Bye-bye now. Uh, now, Patrick. Bye -bye. Uh, be sure to purchase Patrick Mraz and Greg Alban's first album together entitled Map, uh, Mraz Alban Project. It, it's an incredible CD featuring an array of prodigious musicians. Map is available to purchase at www.themap.website, uh, cdbaby.com, amazon.com, to name just a few. Also visit Patrick's official website at www.patrickmraz.com. Uh, join me again next Monday on the Ray Shasho Show, and my guest will be drum percussionist and vocalist of the classic rock band 10CC. We're going to be honored with Kevin Godley. Uh, very special thanks to the great Billy James of Glass Onion PR for arranging our interview with Patrick Moraz. If you have comments, suggestions, or would like to be a guest on the Ray Shasho Show, call 941-877-1552 or email us at ray at publicityworksagency.com. Thank you so much for joining us today, and have a great week, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Ray Shasho Show, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941-877-1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com. Specializing in author and music artist publicity plans, we shine when we make you shine. Join Ray Shasho every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern on BBS Radio, Station 1.